pick up where you left off last, the last build. Still have to log in. Yeah. Okay. Of course, you started that. Hold on. Zoom out. All right. Hit the safety reset. Clear alarms. Reset. Enable. Start. And put your blower back in the auto. Got six pounds on it. Kick it out. Check everything's okay, it'll say it's okay, you can start palletizing. They don't just pick right up where it left off. Start it, okay. start it, you log in to operate, you hit log in to operate, you log in underneath a given username and clock. in as an operator. Operators will only be able to use these screens that are inside of the grate. All other screens outside and wide you cannot have access to. On the front screen here if you come in it will tell you on the top line what current build it is on. Right now we're currently at quartz. It is set for nine layers. Nine layers is the maximum height for that program. Right here is your max box layers. This is what you press to set the actual layers you want. We are currently only doing six layers. It will build six layers and eject that pallet when it is done. You come into download a new program, you go to setups, you will disable the build, and you will hit download. Oh, can't do it right now because we're running operation. But we come over here and ask you for another product ID and the number for it. 
when you download it, you go back to SNR screen, it'll change the name over here. Your build will be locked. In order to start, you unlock the build. And it will begin to power drive. You have on here your box layers. It shows you which box layer it is currently on. Right now it is on layer number two out of eight possible builds. Even though we're only doing six, it will stop at six. It has a pick number. There's four picks for each layer. It tells you it's currently on pick number three out of four. You do your hand with the Yeah. But I'm trying not to hit that button. That's better. See, it just changed right there it's because it completed that process on that build. And it'll be the same on each side. Force complete. If you press force complete, what it'll do is it will stop building that complete area, eject the pallet, and bring in a new pallet and start over with that build. Lock after complete. If you press lock after complete, after it has completed all six layers, the build itself will lock that station out. You can no longer use that station until you unlock it. Your purge in feed button, what that will allow you to do is if you do not have the proper amount of boxes on your end feed, this button will go over and allow the robot to go over, pick the boxes up off the end feed station, place them on the pallet, and eject the pallet and start over. You said that way one second. Your blower controls, automatic, push the blower in automatic, so whenever it is ready to pick up, the blower will turn on itself. If you hit off, it turns the blower off. You can automatically turn it off and on. It's just photography. Manual, just turn it back on. But since we're running production, we'll just leave it in auto. And all your other tabs into here, you have... I won't get into that right now. Conveyor tab, it shows you the actual inside of the cell of the conveyor. It shows you the location of every pallet that is currently in there. And if you watch these indication lights, these are the photo lights inside of each zone. You can see the box traveling down. So this way you can actually tell if the photo light is off or on. If you have a pick not ready and there's three boxes in there, you can look on here and see if the photo eye is out of line. So you know you got a problem with the photo eye, not a program. Work from both sides onto it. Again, you still have the same up here to your vacuum. You turn it off and on. And underneath the conveyor tab, you have one for the robot. This reads the robot tool. Same tab here, turn the conveyor on and off. Inside of here is the bypass valve. The bypass valve is connected to that little black box right over there on the pipe. Bypass valve, you can turn it off and on manually. And you can also watch here, these are the zones. There are four different zones on your end of arm tool. Here. Underneath it. Yeah. And you can watch each zone as it turns off and on. Each build has a different zone that will turn off and on as programmed through a pallet solver to PC base. So you'll be able to tell it, hey, I want these on or these off. And you can sit here and actually watch if they're turning off and on into it. We have up here your end of arm tool vacuum. We actually read the amount of millibar vacuum pressure coming through the tool. You can indicate if you have a box that has dropped off of it, or if it's picked up one too many boxes, or even if you have a restriction inside the flow of the tube. All that is set into the program to read. If any of them do come off on there, the alarm will trip and it'll tell you on the alarm screen that you have an issue. You need to take a look at it. This is your blower temperature. In here, we're actually reading the temperature of the blower itself. If it gets to a particular temperature, it will shut off the cool down. And just a safety precaution to make sure it doesn't overheat. It's hot. Then you can come through and look at each individual line. This would be your canner line. Inside of your canner line, you have all your indication lights here. We're looking for labels. Conveyor if it's on, the PS alarm for safety. You can bypass the label checker on here too. So if you're running a product with no labels onto them, you can bypass the label machine. That way it'll allow the product to go through without knocking it off the line saying you got a bad box. We can do it with that. And here I do have manual controls. I have complete control manually of every product coming off that line. My pushers, I can automatically push them here. 
See right now it's turning on because it just pushed the box and you'll start seeing these lights come on where it's coming down. When you get all three boxes in there for that, you'll have a green light right here showing you have a pick ready for it. And that tells the robot to go ahead and go pick up out of that zone. You have your VFD drives here. These VFDs are connected to this end feed on that conveyor. VFD number five is connected to the out feed on that conveyor. And the VFD faults out. It will come on here. This will change to a VFD fault. You push the VFD fault and it'll ask to reset. When you push the reset, it'll turn it back on. You have complete control of the conveyors themselves right here. You can turn them on manually and turn them off manually. And also with your pallet stop. That's the point flat right down there that stops that power. You can retract and extend them. You even do have control of the pallet pusher back over here. You have the same thing for line two. You do have manual control for your labels. You can turn it off and on to check for labels. Your pre-stage gate over here, though, you have control of that. Canter line does not have a pre-stage gate. Line two has a pre-staging gate. You can open that manually as well. Same thing, pushing your box and all your BFD drives on here. Basically the same layout as your can. This VFD though, because we have three of them on this side, in-feed VFD number two is actually the in-feed conveyor VFD. That one does have a VFD on it, so you can change the speed of the conveyor. As for the canter line, it does not have a VFD. You cannot change the speed on that conveyor. Same thing. Your dispenser tab, it shows the main the dispenser right behind you here. You have the pallet push in case you do have a pallet jam into you there and you can't get it out, you can manually go ahead and push it out, force it out of there to clear it. When you do that, you will have to do a reset on the cell too. You have your IO tags. These actually read to the PLC that's inside the control panel here. So I can go in here if I'm trying to diagnose an issue with the PLC, if it's reading the input outputs, all those are located through here. Tell me if they're on or That's your alarm tab right there. You can actually keep a complete history of all your alarms. You can erase them right here and clear them if you want. Zoom out for that. Say that again. You can clear your alarms from here. You push this, it'll clear the alarms onto it. Because we still have a low dispenser, that alarm will stay on until the dispenser has been filled back up. That's about the screen operations. The only thing on the screen operation that you would use is if you have no alarm signal on here, no light indicating alarm trip, but yet the robot itself is not moving, you go back to your main screen, to the main screen, you'll have an alarm trip over here. Check there for extra alarms. Every time you power the panel off and power it back on, it's going to ask the verified location of the tool. You'll have that alarm come up here. You just hit the buttons to verify. It'll say, are you sure? Yes, okay. It's just to make sure that nobody has actually gone in and physically tried to move it. That's about that. Now, put your sticker finger in it, turn it off. Stick your finger through it. When you trip the lag card, it'll show on here the safety system cell entry trip. If you go to your alarm screen, it will actually tell you which light curtain it is. Right there it says light curtain canter line. And if we went ahead and we tripped it on the canter line. Indicating too with your alarm up here, the blinking red. So what we'll do is on that one, you come back to your main menu. You do your button down here for a safety reset. Anytime you trip the system on the safety cell, being a light curtain or a door, you have to reset. So you hold that down for a split second, the light will stop blinking and go solid red. And once you have done that, you have to restart the system. Now, because we tripped it while it was palletizing, it is currently sitting on top of those boxes right now.
complete proper way to restart this. Because we're currently palletizing right now, and it has already moved to a location, it's now calculated its next position. In order to recover from this after a safety trip, proper way to do it. You do a reset hold. Enable your servos. That turns the motors to the robot back on. If you hit restart, it will continue where it left off. Now you want to see the nut good? Now check the safety on it again. If at this point you have a safety trip, you restart or reset your safety. If you, whenever you do a safety trip, you reset the safety onto it. If you hit reset, what that'll do, it'll shut the blowers off on it. Then you hit enable servo. And you go to start. That robot will go back to the home spot. Because we're going to continue on where it's at. We put it back in the home. Anytime you do a reset and it goes back to home, you have to go back to start palletizing again. It will pick up right where it left off. Okay. If you have a mispick, you'll have an alarm showing indicating on which line it is. When it comes on here, you have a big tap. <laughs> you have your alarm button. You press alarm. It will tell you the error message. Mispick, choose a recovery option. On a mispick, you can choose two recovery options out of there. Retry or continue. If you do a retry, you have to turn the line off. Since we're Come on out. canter line, you would have to turn the line off. When you turn it off, turn your blower off too. That'll put all the boxes back down in the zone. You have to come in, reset your boxes. Put the proper number of boxes back where they need to be. And then what you do is you put your burrow back into automatic. You go back to your alarm screen. Well, so I got a safety cell. When you go into the safety cell, you still have to reset the safety button first. You reset your button. Your light stops flashing. You do retry pick. It will go back and pick up the box. We have an alarm going off on line number two. I forced a miss pick on it. Again, this is if you use your recycle or continue cycle. If you hit continue cycle where it is currently at, it will continue from there. Continue cycle. <laughs> Self-explanatory, the button says what it does. Alright. That's return back to the main menu. That's about it. That'll keep going. Um, while we're on it here, they want to, on this line here, on the canner line, even though we're currently set at six layers before it is complete and ejects the pallet, we are currently only on five, but they want to finish that pallet out and just eject it. At that point, you just hit force complete, and it'll just eject it. Wait when it ejects. This is the power shutoff and disconnect to the robot only. That turns off the drives on the robot. Just turn it sideways, it is off. Over here is the panel disconnect power. Turn that, it shuts the power off to the panel. Everything turned off in there. Because 
VFD drives, the ones you see that will fault out, these are your VFDs. You've got five of them for the whole entire set. I'm assuming on this floor over there, what's the right? And then down to the one I saw it looks just like it. Right there. Okay. Let me back out. The servo drives on the robot are all operated through here. From your servo zeros all the way to servo four, this would be your bottom base, all the way through your wrist, elbow, and the end of arm tool. So this is the actual MLX program controller. That's the robot program controller. What was he doing over there? But you already left it. I'll show you here. I'll put it 